Dr. Coles, what about severe depression? Mm -hmm. What about a patient who has to take SSRIs? What mm -hmm. kind of natural products can they take? Mm -hmm. The question of course is, do they have to take SSRIs? Uh, I think that people who are suicidally depressed probably mm -hmm. need to be in a safe place where they're protected and nurtured and, and removed from the stressful situations. And the only choice we have these days, unfortunately, is mental institutions for that purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, in years past, there used to be outpatient facilities that specialized in the acute, severe mental breakdown, emotional breakdown, or psychotic uh, episodes or something there. Um, uh, that that didn't use drugs or electroshock or straitjackets or locked mm -hmm. rooms, et cetera. But there aren't any of those available now. No. Unfortunately, the, the uh, physicians who are in charge of mental institutions are all pro-drug psychiatrists, essentially. So the first thing they do is to inject or give pills that alter the brain enough so the patient is sleepy or disabled and doesn't mm -hmm. have the energy to complete the suicidality. Or the suicide. So they wouldn't have the energy yeah, to so, okay. yeah, so they're disabled, they're made into zombies, zombies don't have the energy, and then they stay, keep away from anything that could be used for, to strangle themselves or cut themselves, etc. So it's a very temporary uh, imprisonment for their own protection is what happens. But in order for uh, them to be under easiest control, you know, not being asking questions or being disruptive or whatever. Drugs are very effective straitjackets are um, okay. in effect. So heavily drugged patients, you know, they sleep and they're easy to take care of and they're not disruptive. Mm -hmm. But then long term, what's the consequence? If, the, if it's just more than a short term use of these chemicals that alter the brain, uh, they have to be discharged eventually unless they're committed. Uh, sometimes they're, they're not a lot of the antipsychotic drugs, the, the Haldol and the Respiradol things, actually can cause depression. These are drugs that make you feel, you're not very alert, you feel like a zombie, you feel dead inside. Um, and so sometimes they're, they actually aggravate the depression. Mm. Uh, and, and then in most psychiatric hospitals, they have electroshock units. And there's people getting electroshocked every day in my city. Uh, we thought that was a barbaric thing that was was out of the picture, but it's not it's true. Not. And the justification is, well, the drugs aren't working. We don't. What choice do we have but electroshock? And short term, you know, in the first few weeks, electroshock erases memory. Basically, it's a memory destroyer, short term and long term, especially short term. So electroshock probably works by erasing short term memory. So you can't remember what you were depressed about. You're, you're, you know, mm -hmm. you lose your memory for the painful marriage or whatever. <clears throat> and so you're, uh, so you know, short term, it seems to work as far as depression mm -hmm. is concerned. But it's a brain, it destroys brain cells, and there's no question about that. Um, so the justification for electroshock these days is the meds didn't do the job. <laughs> well, okay. A lot of meds make things worse, and so that's kind of poor justification for it. But there are, uh, but there used to be alternatives, and maybe we can talk about that in another segment about the, the experiment that was done called the Soteria House uh, mm -hmm. experiment. That, uh, in a nutshell, uh, it was a situation where people with their first psychotic break or real severe emotional breakdown would go to this uh, place where they didn't use drugs, and they had a lot of people there that were with the people, and and nurtured mm -hmm. them and, and went along with them and understood them and they got lots of sleep and they got good food and it wasn't a coercive situation at all. And vast majorities of these people improved and were cured and never got sick again. Uh, uh, whereas the uh, control group, every other person in the San Diego area went to a mental institution the other ones went to the Soteria House. The people who went to the mental institution all got drugs and they had a very poor cure rate. Mm -hmm. Whereas Soteri House was, was proving that non-drug approaches were curative and healthy. Uh, well, when the psychiatric industry, National Institute of Mental Health, <clears throat> discovered how effective it was, and they didn't need psychiatrists to do it, they didn't need drugs, there was a subtle, actually overt, uh, suppression of the information, and they defunded the experiment. Um, 
and now there's no such thing as a sartori house in the United States anymore. There are some in Europe, but uh, so a highly effective curative approach was regarded as a threat to the institutions, the industries that were that thrived on mental illness not being cured. Serious, serious reality. Very serious. Yeah. Thank you for that yeah. information. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. yeah.